Hey guys, it's FAQ Friday, and I bet you didn't expect a video from me because I've missed the last two. Uh, again, thank you for all your, your concern and your comments. Um, just dealing, dealing with the headaches a little bit more. Uh, today, I have not had a headache. It's the first day in over two weeks. So I'm hopeful that the medicine that I'm now on um, for preventing them is actually starting to work. So fingers crossed, but I don't wanna talk anymore about that. I'm tired of talking about that. Let's just get right into the questions. So the first question is from Ben, and I think this is from the companion planting video. Um, Thanks for this. Two questions. With interplanting, should I space my tomato plants further apart than usual to allow room, or can I keep it the same 12 to 18 inches? Um, I would, mine are all about 12, between 12 and 18 inches, and I do the interplanting, interplanting along the front so with basil and so the tomato plants are pushed back from the edge and then i plant the basil um, in between those toward the front of the bed so 12 to 18 inches should be totally fine the second question is for parsley will cilantro have the same benefits i'm a much bigger cilantro fan than parsley and i believe they're in the same family um i'm not sure if they're in the same family but I'm a bigger fan of cilantro uh, as well. The only problem with that is even though that tomatoes and um, cilantro grow, go great together in salsa, they don't grow well together because cilantro is a cool season plant and tomatoes are a warm season plant. So by the time the tomatoes start growing, um, it's warm and your cilantro is gonna bolt. So better to plant the cilantro in the fall or early spring. The next question is from Donna. And she says, thanks for the update. I just built my strawberry tower using crates I bought at Walmart. I bought three, but I'm worried that the water may not reach the bottom crate. I feel like I should overwater the top crate to be sure the water gets into the lower crate. Will this hurt the plants in the top crate or should I keep it two crates tall? Uh, if you have good drainage, you should be fine three crates tall. If you have drip, you could actually put a little ring of drip in each section and that would make sure it's well watered uh, and I don't think you're gonna hurt the top crate by really really watering it well as long as you've got good drainage it should go through the whole thing um, but the great thing about those is you can unstack if you do find that you're not getting any good drainage out the bottom there's nothing coming out and it's not staying wet enough just maybe unstack one and have a, a stack of two and, and one of one hope that answered your question uh, next question is from Kathy. She says, help, my peppers have these black marks on the stock where the branches are. What is this? I can't believe it's a good thing. Any advice? This actually was a very popular question and that's why I included it here. So you're not alone, Kathy. Um, but actually, in most cases, it's totally normal. It's just the coloring of the stem on a lot of pepper varieties. I've got some on my peppers. Never really thought about it actually until I got so many comments about it. So yeah, in most cases, it's totally fine and you'll see it as a very even distribution. If you've got like splotches and maybe some furriness or something, then you've got a problem. But in general, you're totally fine. All right, the next one is from Ms. Made in Hawaii. And she says, do you treat or cure your bamboo somehow before putting it in your garden? I can harvest it in my area, but I'm afraid it will take root. Um, I don't cure it, and I have had some actually put out sprouts. Typically, the ones you're going to want for your garden are already dead and dry, and that makes them rigid. If they're green, they're going to be a little floppy, and they're not going to be a good support anyway but you could get one that's right on the line which i have and it will start to put out green shoots um and i just pick those off and i've never actually had them take root now maybe in hawaii with uh, your weather is a little different than here you might have them take root but just pull them up at the end of the season i don't think they're going to take root enough to start taking over your beds in that short amount of time you could also lay them in the sun after you've harvested them for a week or so just to make sure they really dry out and that might help all right, John asks, uh, I picked up some of the Neptune's Harvest on your recommendation. Hope you're loving it as much as I do. 
Could I start to spray the foliage as soon as I, I transplant them from seed or should I wait until they grow and mature a little? Um, I don't think a half strength is going to hurt them, you know, once they have their true leaves. I usually don't start any of my spraying routine until they're about 8 to 12 inches tall and then they, can, they get the aspirin and all of that, all that good stuff. All right, the next one is from Aries Very Own. I have a question. Can you tell me what I can do for my tomatoes and peppers? The, they both put flowers, but then they drop. Can you please help? Yeah, and typically that's from a couple of reasons. Usually it's from the heat. And if it's too hot, if it's getting into the 90s consistently, then the flowers will fall off whether they're pollinated or not. Um, and so you just have to take care of them until the, the temperatures get back to, you know, the 80s. Uh, the other reason is because they're just not getting pollinated. And so I'm actually going to be doing a, a pollination video for tomatoes within the next couple of weeks. Um, but one quick tip is just go by and smack the tomato cage or the string if you're growing them up. Um, peppers just hit whatever you've tied them to and uh, you'll help with the pollination that way. But I said, like I said, I'll get into that a little bit more in detail within the next couple of weeks. I would say it's most likely from the heat. Sandy K asks, what is no dig? I mentioned no dig gardening a week or two ago. No dig gardening is just the belief that rather than till up the soil every year and, and work in mulch or um, amendments into the soil, to leave it and just add mulch on top maybe twice a year and let the the bacteria the microbes the worms work that into the soil for you just because there's a ton of uh, there's a network of of fungi and microorganisms under there that you are disturbing every time you break up the soil so if you imagine your house it's hooked to electrical lines and cable and internet and they're all coming into your house and if every spring somebody came and chopped those up and you have to now rebuild. So that's kind of the way the thought goes there. And I really, in, in all the research I've done, I'll probably do another video on this specifically, but uh, I, I really think that that's the, the Charles Dowding in England, he has a great YouTube channel and he talks about this and he, he actually does experiments in his garden with dig, no dig right next to each other. And you can see he does get a much better yield from the no dig plus less weeds and less work so um it's a good thing I'm, I'm doing it in my raised beds all right miriam asks if you have a drip system running already how do you know whether you're giving the plants too much water do you mix up the neptune's harvest with a gallon of water and then water only with a quart or a half gallon or so of the mixture per plant my veggies are on my balcony in containers with a drip system. Um, don't want to drown them. So if you're feeding every two weeks, you might be overwatering, but that's not really going to hurt the plant if it's every two weeks. I actually do water my plants before I do the feeding because I feel like if the soil is already moist, it's going to saturate the nutrients are going to saturate in better and have less of a chance of kind of just running right through so uh yeah you're going to be fine there and just always the finger test put your finger in there and make sure it's not too moist all the time but every two weeks feeding them not going to have a problem colby asks question for next time what fruits or vegetables do you plant along a north facing wall or fence thanks and keep up the great comment content. Thank you, Colby. Um, I actually, fruit trees are a good thing to plant against a north wall. Uh, lettuces can deal with some shade against a north wall or fence. I actually have my blackberries growing against my north facing fence and they do really well because in the winter there's more shade there because the sun is lower and in the summer the sun is directly overhead so they're getting a lot of um, sun. And so that's perfect for things like berries that are actually dormant in the winter and they don't really care if there's sun or not. And by the time they start to leaf out, the sun is, is coming back up and able to hit the, the new leaves. So um, those are my three choices. Hong asks, uh, you're in California. How much do you pay for water and how do you save money for water or maybe save water? 
Um, well, I don't know if our water is more expensive than anywhere else because I've only ever lived here. I do know we need more of it in the summertime because it doesn't rain at all. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because my vegetable gardens are all on drip. They have been now for, this is the second year. And so that saves water right there. Um, they're also in raised beds with plastic lining. So that saves water. As far as all these tropical plants you see back here, most people think that I must use a ton of water, but almost everything you see, especially over on this side, is all actually containers that are hidden in cement rockwork. And so being in containers and being in the shade and being surrounded by cement, they actually stay pretty moist. When I planted them initially, I included a lot of water absorbing polymers like the baby diapers that you, we've done before. Um, and now as of just a month ago, this is all on drip now. So I actually don't use a ton of water. Watering the lawn is actually the most water that I use. So that's that. And this one's from Nicole. A month ago, you posted a video about growing tomatoes in containers and you used a tablespoon of Epsom salts under the tomato. In this one, which was planting the tomatoes, you say don't use Epsom. Is it different for containers? Yes. Um, and this is one of those things that you wish you could go back and add something to a video because you forget sometimes to say things. So in the, um, the recent video with planting, I said I don't use Epsom salt because that tends to compete. The magnesium tends to compete with the calcium and can lead to blossom and rot. In containers, because tomatoes do need calcium and you wanna make sure in containers that they're getting, not calcium, magnesium. So you wanna make sure they're getting everything they need because they're in a very small confined space. And so that's why I use the Epsom, but I did counterbalance it with uh, gypsum and that's the calcium. So they had both going on there uh, to help with that. So yeah, typically in the ground, I don't use Epsom salt on tomatoes, but in containers I do because it's balanced. The novice asks, can aerated compost tea made from worm castings replace fertilizer or is it just an addition to the fertilizer? So this is kind of the same thing as I talked about with the compost. So if it's compost tea, worm castings, um, those build the soil. They don't feed the plant necessarily, but they build the soil. There's humate in there, which is also in the uh, Neptune's Harvest Tomato and Veg formula. And that's basically, wanna say hi? Oh, come up here, say hi. Um, that's basically building the soil. It's feeding the microbes and all the good bacteria in the soil. So with that, you can actually get away with less fertilizer because the microbes and things are the middleman between the, um, the, the nutrients and the plant. So the nutrients are taken by the microbes and microorganisms and ushered into the roots. And so the more of that you have in there, which you can get from compost tea, uh, the less fertilizer you're gonna need. The last question is from Ryan. And he says, I assume for anyone watching this channel that more time in the garden is better. Yes. But I was curious how much time you spend in a week actually doing garden stuff. I assume you have a day job or maybe CGTV is a full-time thing for you. But even with a good system for doing things, I'm sure you're really busy out there all the time. Well, right now with the pandemic, my other business isn't doing so well. So yeah, this is a little more full-time than it has been. But I still don't spend that much time actually gardening. I spend a lot of time out here. Um, filming takes a lot more time than if I was just gardening. And then I spend a lot of time out here just kind of hanging out. I would say four hours a week max for actual garden work. Now, obviously spring planting and fall planting, those are two times where I'm out here a little more, but just kind of taking care of things. I mean, four hours a week actually seems like more than I probably do spend doing that. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys, how, how often you spend out there working in the garden. I know we want to be out there as often as we can, but actually doing the hard work. Let me know down below um, what's your take on that. 
So with Frequently Asked Question Friday, we are, we're getting a ton of questions and unfortunately, we're not able to get to everyone. And they're coming in now on all sides. We've got the YouTube comments, we've got Facebook, Instagram, and now email. Um, I do have to say, if you want your question answered, the best place to do it, to ask it, is on YouTube because I don't get to Facebook as often as I want to. I don't get to Instagram and they tend to pile up and then I get overwhelmed. And then email through the website is actually worse because it stacks them. And if I miss one, sometimes it can get buried. Uh, whereas YouTube kind of helps remind me. And so if at all possible, ask your questions through YouTube. Um, and unless you're gonna send me a picture, then Facebook or Instagram, if you, you have a question with a picture, then that might be a good way to do it. But ultimately the best way to get your question answered is gonna be on YouTube. And now I gotta thank my wife, Emily, because she's actually helping me a lot, especially with the headaches. She's reading off the questions and I'm dictating the answer and she's typing them in. So it's a team effort here. So I am looking forward to be back out in the garden. These headaches hopefully will be diminishing even more. And um, I've got a video plan for Sunday, self-sufficient self Sunday, and that's going to be the three sisters method of planting. And so that's, uh, that's one to look forward to. That's in two days. So I think all should be good and I should be back on a normal schedule here for self-sufficient Sunday. I am toying with a couple of ideas. You know, the tomatoes, I've got a two or three more planned for Tomato Tuesday. And then it just is gonna kinda of go into maintenance mode. There's not gonna be a lot to talk about. Um, so I would like to know what you guys would like, and it doesn't have to start with a T, <laughs> even though it's a Tuesday video. If there's certain subjects that you wanna hear, you know, I, my first couple of videos were not even vegetables. They were the tropicals, and then I did a lavender one, which was my first one that took off, and, and hibiscus. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? I, you've gotta be growing other things besides vegetables, right? You're probably growing flowers, at least for pollinators. So let me know what your interests are, and we're gonna expand and just do what this community asks for. We're not gonna stick to one thing unless you want me to stick to one thing. But I do get questions on flowers every once in a while. I just don't really have a lot of, or see a lot of interest in that. But if that's a secret interest you have, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you on Self-Sufficient Sunday.